Dear members of the scientific community, dear guests, as PhD students in quantum and particle physics, we would be grateful and proud to start this conference by remembering and celebrating Niels Bohr and his legacy. We would never miss such an opportunity on a peaceful day. However, now we have to address you not as PhD students, but as humans and as Ukrainians. By sharing the terrifying truth that we experience, the Russian war against us. We have some numbers for you. 352 civilian deaths, 16 of them children, in just the first four days of the Russian invasion. Hundreds of thousands of people who have left their homes behind and have fled and have to seek to, to find refuge in the foreign lands. And many of them do not even have a home anymore because it has simply been destroyed. The media of free and independent countries such as Denmark, such as Ukraine, do not hide away from sharing this information and we are sure and we are hopeful that you are all well informed. Today, we would like to stress that among other horrible things, the Russian attack on Ukraine is also an attack on science. It's 2022, 2nd of March, Kharkiv. It is a city of students and it was bombed, it's bombed now by Russia. This is the city where Landau and Lifshitz worked. It's where Sinelnikov once contributed to the peaceful splitting of the atom, of the nucleus. This is the city where, while we are speaking, a student dorm is on fire. It is the city where the Karazin State University was under a rocket attack. Last night, Professor Amosov died in the result of these tragic events. The city where residential neighborhoods and kindergartens and schools and hospitals are being destroyed every minute as the new norm. This is just one of many Ukrainian cities. We are a community without borders. We know a scientist from every other country. It is in our power to stop the war and save our colleagues in Ukraine and also in Russia. And here is how. This is our peer-reviewed idea. What we do. I flew from Turin yesterday to join this conference and call for action while having my family under air raids. They're getting ready to jump on the train and leave to the West. But they refuse, say for the family of Tanya. Ukrainians and foreign, foreign regions are now joining the army. Young scientists stay in Ukraine. 80,000 people return to Ukraine to defend our land. We in Europe can barely hold ourselves away from joining the hell of this day. The only thing that stops us from doing this is that we are much more helpful on this scientific, international, and diplomatic front. Our army is full of people, but scarce on time. Ukraine will stand until the world community think and and acts about the solution for the future. Volunteers from around the world join in united action. From all over the EU, they send trucks with medical aid and defensive equipment to the border, creating jams and roads of inbound traffic. Many people help refugees to start their lives from scratch. They host and feed them. And we are so very grateful for this support. And here is what you, what every one of us can do. We need to raise awareness in our respective circles and clearly state our position when we have a voice. We need to sign open letters and address our governments collectively since democracies have this power. We need to suspend publishing of papers, suspend, not cease, in, with Russian state institutions. 
A delayed paper is nothing compared to the damage inflicted upon peaceful cities, civilians, defenders, parents, and children every day. This is not a punishment. This is just a time and a signal for them to think. Science is an ancient craft. It will survive a month without a paper. And you know it. The idea is to reach out to as many, many people as possible inside the country to stop the war machine. Human relations are much more amendable than human lives. Help scientists flee the Putin's madness. Encourage them to leave Russia now. Academic mobility for a month is not an unusual thing. With the collective move, the war will be over soon. Remember, USSR, after years of loyal attitude, closed its borders and mistreated the greatest scientists of the last century, Landau, Sakharov, Sakharov Karolyov, save the physicists of Russia to save the science potential we need. Urge them to leave Russia now and go abroad. We will buy them a ticket. Welcome Ukrainian researchers when they come alive from Kyiv, Kharkiv, Odessa, and other peaceful cities. When Ukrainian scientists can peacefully exit, accept them in your institute. I doubt it is a matter of just a couple of days until they evacuate, but we need to act today. Now, in front of, now not in front of books or calculations, but hiding underground, there are your colleagues and our mentors. Alexander Kordyuk, a director of Kyiv Institute, a specialist of high temperature superconductivity. Serhii Sharapov, a specialist in condensed matter. Pavlona Kaznoy, a cosmologist. Zhelkovsky, an expert in membrane physics, and many, many more. And finally, stop the dual purpose projects. The war will end, and we must think about tomorrow. What kind of world we want to live in. However lucrative the grants, we see that weapons is not a solution. Ukraine fights not only for its independence, but also for values we share with you. Science has always fought the darkness. In dark times, like now, the bright people shine the most. I see many bright people in front of me. Please join us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For us, it is hard. It is much harder for people in Ukraine. They barely can watch this stream, the live stream that they're seeing now. We are here available for you for any questions, for your suggestions and your support. Thank you. Thank you.